Hey everyone, so recently I just finished my first level 1 playthrough of Elden Ring and I never did that in any Souls game so I didn't know what to expect and if I would be able to finish it but it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be so I just wanted to make a quick video going over some recommendations and things that I learned to make your run easier uh, if you're like me and you've never done this before. So a couple of things before we get started. First of all, there will be a lot of spoilers uh, so yeah, if you haven't finished the game yet, I recommend that you stop watching. And second of all, um, I'm not an expert in Souls game so if, if I miss some stuff or if I say something that is obvious to you, uh, please be aware. So the first step once you're out of the uh, tutorial area and you get your, your horse torrent is to pick up your main weapon. Uh, you can keep the, the base weapon, the club, but it's actually a pretty bad weapon, I think. Uh, so it's better to pick another one. I'm gonna give you three recommendations. My first pick is the Uchi Katana, which is a very good weapon. Uh, you can get very early, it's very close to the starting area. It has bleed, which is really good in the game. Uh, it has decent damage and the weapon art unsheath is extremely good. It does good damage, uh, it has good reach and it does insane poise damage so it's gonna break the stance of the bosses really quickly. The broadsword is also very easy to get uh, when you start the game. It's decently strong. Uh, the weapon art skill is also very good and, and breaks stance very quickly, um, but it doesn't have bleed. And finally, the Morning Star is also a very good mace that has bleed. Uh, the weapon art sucks on it, it's, it's kick. So I would recommend once if you pick the Morning Star to replace the uh, weapon art by something better. Once you chose the weapon that you want, most likely you're not going to be able to use it because the base stats are just too low, at least that's the case for the Uchi Katana. So our first stop will be to pick up our talisman, the first talisman. And for this I recommend to pick up the Radagon Sword Seal, which is in the um, um, far right, far east of Kaelid. Uh, you can actually take your horse and go there right at the start of the game without fighting any monster uh, and just pick up the talisman and be good to go. Uh, but this talisman gives you 5 points in, um, in vigor, 5 points in endurance, uh, dexterity and strength. So it gives you a really good boost of 20 levels, the equivalent of 20 levels to your stat, which is you know, essential for this kind of runs. It's gonna allow you to use a lot more weapon than uh, with the best stats and you know, including the Uchi Getana, which is uh, which you're gonna be able to wear with this talisman. So this talisman is in a fort called Fort Faroth. Uh, you can just Google the destination to see where it is if you don't know already. Uh, but just go there, pick it up, and you're good to go. Once you picked your weapon and you have the talisman, uh, you're gonna want to upgrade your weapon a little bit. And you can actually find a, a, a lot more smithing stone level 1 that you need to to upgrade your weapon. So before you head to the Stormvale Castle, I recommend that you upgrade your weapon to at least level 3, uh, which is really easy to do anyway. With your weapon upgraded and the Radagon Sword Seal, uh, you should be able to take on Margit and, um, and Godric, hopefully. Uh, once that's done, after you kill Margit, you're gonna have access to your second talisman slot. So for the second talisman slot, I strongly suggest that you get the Blue Dancer Talisman. And what the Blue Dancer Talisman does is that the lighter you are, the more damage you will do. At the beginning of the game, it's okay to wear an armor but past a certain point you'll get one shot by anything anyway. So you might as well remove your armor and, and use the talisman to get as much damage as you can. Now before moving on to Lyonia, which is the next, uh, the next zone, I strongly suggest to take a detour in the Weeping Peninsula and to get the Opaline Bubble Tear. It's the, um, it's the Wondrous Flask uh, buff that you get from the Earth Tree in the Weeping Peninsula. Uh, this is a huge, a huge buff. Uh, it lasts for a long time and it lets you tank one hit without taking almost any damage uh, from any attack. Uh, so later in the game when everything one shots you and you have to be almost perfect on every boss, uh, this is a lifesaver. You can tank one hit that would have killed you otherwise. So it's, you know, it's, it makes everything a lot more comfortable. So once you get in your near of the lakes, you'll have access to the smithing stones 2 th and 3. Uh, you'll be able to get a lot of them and you can upgrade your weapon to um, uh, to at least level 9 uh, or, or more. So I suggest you do that, you upgrade your weapon as much as you can. And while you're at it, I didn't talk about this, but while you're at it, if you decide to use summons, um, pick up the glove wars from the caves to upgrade your summons as well. Um, I know some people don't like to use summons, but if you're gonna use them, you might as well upgrade them as much as possible so they don't get one shot by anything. 
And speaking of summons in, uh, in Lyonia, once you're in the Raya Locaria Academy, you can pick up the Marionette. Uh, the Marionette is a very good summons uh, because uh, with your base stats, you're able to cast it. They stay at range, so they don't interfere with you. I, I don't like melee summons because they get in your way a lot. Um, and they do a very decent amount of damage. So I would suggest pick it, picking up those summons. I think they're really good. Now, something else that is extremely important um, in, in Raya Lucaya Academy is the uh, Glintstone Weight Blade. The Glintstone Weight Blade lets you put magic and cold affinity on your weapons. Magic we don't really care about, but cold affinity is massive. Uh, so it's going to increase your damage because it adds magic damage to your weapon. So um, overall, since the scaling is a little bit worse, you don't care about that because your stats are very low. But the overall damage is, is, uh, is higher um, unless the enemy is resistant to magic. Uh, but if they are not, the damage is going to be a little bit higher. But mostly, it's going to add cold to your weapon. So now if you use the Uchi Katana, you have cold and bleed. Bleed and cold are insane for this type of runs because the damage they do is based on the enemy's health and not on your stats. So they're always going to do the same damage uh, whether you're low level or high level, which is massive. Um, bleed does a lot of damage when it procs. Cold does a little bit less damage, but while the enemy is frozen, it takes more damage. So when you stack both of them on your blade, on the Uchi Katana, you, you can do a ton of damage just with that um, on bosses. So the strategy for most endgame bosses is going to be to proc Frost or Bleed or both and to break stance of the bosses. In fact, the reason I suggest the Uchi Katana, the Morning Star or the Broadsword um, to do the level 1 runs is because they are all really good weapons for posture breaking. Unsheath on the Uchi Katana, for example, does a ton of damage and a ton of posture damage. So even on endgame bosses, you'll be able to break their stance in a couple, uh, two or three unsheath attacks. That paired with Frost and Bleed, you'll be able to kill uh, endgame bosses very easily. It's, it's very surprising the amount of damage you can do uh, with just being level 1. I mean, look, at, look at this endgame fight, for example, the amount of damage it takes. Um, with cold and unsheath uh, with the right build is just you know, it's staggering. But to come back to where we were, uh, after you kill Renala, you're gonna unlock your third talisman slot. Uh, for the third talisman slot, it's actually a pretty good timing because it's right before you enter the Altus Plateau. And right at the beginning of the Altus Plateau, you're gonna have access to the Ritual Sword Talisman. Uh, it's a talisman that increases your damage by 10%. Um, when you're at full health and since you're gonna be at one shot territory the whole time uh, you're gonna be you're gonna want to be at full health anyway so most of the time you're gonna have this uh, this, this talisman uh, activated and something else that I recommend is that once you unlock the fourth talisman after Godfrey you can put anything in there for the meantime but what I recommend is once you get to Faro Mazula you can finish up the Alexander quest line Alexander the Charm uh, once you finish up that quest line, you get the Shard of Alexander Talisman. This talisman is really good too. It, it gives you a 15% boost to your weapon skill damage. Um, so if you end up spamming Unsheath or you know any any weapon skill that is good, uh, you're gonna get a 15% you know straight up damage boost. So Shard of Alexander damage boost plus the Blue Dancer Talisman plus the Ritual Sword. Uh, plus cold plus bleed you're gonna do a ton of damage even at level one also another recommendation um, on your offhand you can have a second weapon with the uh, bloodhound step or the quick step skill um, there's a lot of, of attacks from bosses that are very hard to avoid with just the normal roll like the one you just saw on the screen so having a second weapon with quick step that you can quickly uh, swap to you know and use the the blown heart step or the quick step to avoid is just you know it's very useful a lot of end game fights have attacks that are difficult to avoid you know like Malena, Mal Mal Malenia or Elden Beast stuff like that so quick step comes in very handy but those are just general recommendations that help me through the game at level 1. There are plenty more weapons, talisman, armor, ash of war, summon that you can use and experiment with. So uh, feel free to get crazy and try new stuff. So I don't know if this video is going to help anyone, but I hope it helps at least a few people. Uh, and if you're hesitating whether you should try this challenge, I think it's very fun. And it's not as bad as I thought it'd be. It's just that you don't have much health, but the damage is still very decent. Uh, so if you're hesitating, just give it a shot. You know, at least see how far you can go. And uh, I think you'll be surprised at, you know, how far you can actually make it and potentially finish the game. So 
let me know. I'm curious to see who wants to try it, who has done it already. And if you have things that I didn't talk about and you think it's a, it's a good advice, leave it in the comment and you know, it's going to be good for me and for other people too. So thank you for watching and see you next time.